Hello and welcome back to another build video where I lose my mind fixing horribly made builds. Today we're going to be taking a look at Cyrobe's mathematically correct Mariah's Executioner's Greatsword build, which is so very far from mathematically correct. The reason why I haven't done one of these for a little bit is because none of them really piqued my interest. Then this one came out, and I wasn't able to get to it right away because I was busy working on Lords of the Fallen, but oh boy, the more I look at it, the worse it seems to get. And to those people wondering that I don't have any gameplay of a Mariah's Executioner's Sword, I already made a video covering a optimized Mariah's Executioner's Sword that doesn't buff stack. So if you wanted to actually look at that, you absolutely could. I didn't recommend using Oath of Vengeance or Rallying Standard in that build, and I probably should have. But if you want to look at something that just gives you a general idea of what the damage is like on a optimized build, that is what you should use. Obviously, do not listen to Cyrobe. He is the clickbait YouTuber only looking to make money and has no care about making a well-optimized build. Jumping straight into the build, this build is super unique and actually works really well but in a weird way because this build has a really fun interaction that feels super rewarding when you manage to actually pull it off. The core components of this build are the Marias Executioner Greatsword and the Sorcery Ronnie's Dark Moon. The third hidden passive that I mentioned is that Ronnie's Dark Moon can also block spell casts from enemies. It needs to actually be fully charged and the moon needs to start launching forward before it can do this. Now for our physics flask, you'll need the Thorny Crack tier to also increase the strength of our Ash of War and spells, as the Thorny Crack tier functions the same way as our Talisman buffs. For our gear, the Snow Witch Hat boosts our moon spells by 10%, or you can use the Mushroom Crown like I mentioned earlier to increase the damage of your Ash of War even more. Then our Carry and Regal Staff also boosts our moon sorceries by an additional 10%, so make sure to use that one too in your offhand. And of course, the Staff and Marias Executioner are all at plus 10 max level. And I like to use the following Talisman that I mentioned earlier as well for as much damage as possible. The Shard of Alexander, Millicent, Rotten Wing, and the Godfrey Icon all to boost the damage of Marias Executioner to the max. For my stats, we are at level 150 for the first time on this channel, as every build I've made before this has always been at 125. Make sure to start as the Hero class to get the same even stats as me. These stats allow us to stay healthy and meet all the requirements for our weapons, spells, and gear. The 68 in also gives you access to any additional spells like Common Azure. Now the main thing that this build comes down to is its stats are horrible. The armor, it's not ideal, it's not optimal. I don't even think it's fashion, I think he just wanted to work in the Snow Witch hat to buff Ronnie's Dark Moon, which doesn't benefit Mariah's Executioner's Greatsword at all. The premise of the build is extremely flawed. Having 68 intelligence for a weapon that does not scale with intelligence is absurd. There is no benefit to using Ronnie's Dark Moon because A, the armor shred that it uses is only applied to magic damage and it's lower than stuff like soul stifler or the shriek of milos ash of war using ronnie's dark moon which only debuffs magic damage for mariah's executioner's greatsword is insanely stupid now using frost as a debuff is actually really good using ronnie's dark moon to proc it is again pretty stupid since you still need two casts of Ronnie's Dark Moon to proc it. If you use a Frost Pot, you only need one because the Frost Pot has more buildup and you don't need to waste 68 int in a build that doesn't require int. Again, Frost Pot has 110 more frost than Ronnie's Dark Moon. Why are you putting Ronnie's Dark Moon in this build? It does not make sense. He also has Terra Magica. Fine if you have the stats for it, but you don't actually gain that big of a benefit from it since you could use another buff such as Rallying Standard instead and not have to waste the stats to use it since, again, Terra Magica doesn't buff physical damage, it only buffs magic damage. Now, yes, they are different buff types, but you'd still need to invest the int in level-restricted build like level 150. You should absolutely have 60 Vigor at level 150. There is no reason not to. You should have 60 Vigor by level 100, no matter the build. You should not have 20 Mind either. You can absolutely do this at base Mind. It's a little inconvenient, yes, but 
wasting 11 points in mind is so stupid. Having the minimum requirements, basically, for your weapon is insanely stupid. You are level 150. You can have 120 points to go into your damage stats. And you choose to have, more or less, the bare minimum requirements for your weapon. And then you spend the rest of those 120 points on a spell that's worse than using a weapon that you only need to spend 6 points for. That's the problem with this build. It's spread way too thin for a benefit that's just worse than using something that's less stat intensive. I don't care if Ronnie's Dark Moon absorbs spells. That's not a relevant function of the build. That doesn't help Mirai's Execution's Greatsword at all. If you want to know where to put your points past level 150 for any returning players or high level players, sink any additional points into strength. Like I said, the Ash of War scales with your weapon's total attack power. So the more strength you have, the more damage it'll contribute to the Ash of War. He says that you should invest into strength after you reach level 150. You don't have 60 vigor. Invest into vigor first. After that, you want to invest in strength and arcane. Not just strength, because Mirai's Executioner's Greatsword scales on Arcane, both the physical and magic damage scale off of Arcane. So you want 56 Arcane. The magic soft cap for Arcane is 50. The physical damage soft cap for Arcane is 60, and it has exponential decay, meaning the stopping point is going to be around 56. For optimal stats, you want 56 Arcane, assuming you have 120 stats to allocate. Then you want 80 strength. You don't want 54 because for my improved build, we have 60 vigor with Gajic's Great Rune and Oath of Vengeance activated. We have 22 endurance. We have 80 strength, 20 dexterity, and 73 arcane. 60 vigor is the vigor soft cap. 80 strength is the strength soft cap and we put the remaining points into arcane outside of getting 20 dexterity for the weapon requirements for the winged great horn to use this build you will start with the winged great horn use soul stifler use blood boil aromatic throw a frost pot switch to commander standard use the railing standard ash of war for a stronger version of golden vow then you will swap to the grafted blade greatsword Use Oath of Vengeance gives you 5 seconds of super armor, which means that you won't be staggered by most attacks. Which is different from hyper armor, which multiplies your current poise value. Super armor does not rely on your poise whatsoever. It also gives you plus 5 in every stat. Not really that important for this build. The important part is the 5 seconds of super armor, which should cover almost all of the Marius Executioner sword weapon art if you immediately swap to it. And you also get 45% damage negation, which means you will be super tanky and you will be able to get off the Mirai's Executioner's Greatsword weapon art safe. For the armor, we have the full Spellblade set boosting our magic damage. For the Talismans, we have the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia boosting our consecutive attack damage. Then we have the Godfrey Icon and the Shard of Alexander boosting our Ash of War damage. Because you always want to fully charge the Ash of War, we'll be getting 15% for each Talisman. For the Great Rune, we have Godric's Great Rune, that's going to give us plus 5 for all stats when it's activated. That means we can push our damage even further. Then we have the Magic Shrouding Crack tier for 20% magic damage. And we have the Thorny Crack tier for more consecutive damage. Now to wrap up this video, I have all of the damage numbers that I have calculated for you. So, on top is going to be Cyrobe's mathematically correct build, and on bottom is going to be my improved build. Now, I do want to note that the motion value is not 100% accurate because Mirai's Executioner Sword does do damage in ticks, which means that each damage tick is going through defense separately. However, to make it easier for you guys to understand, I have added the motion value of all the ticks together to get 600.
That way it's nice and easy and I don't have to have a whole page of graphs having each specific tick. So with my build and the buffs that I have chosen, I am getting 68% more damage than Cyro's mathematically correct Rise Executioner Sword build. I think that is the highest I have ever seen when making one of my build corrections. 68%. This is with the averaged PvE, defense, and damage negation. So it's going to change based on which enemy you are going to attack, the exact percent differences, but on average you are going to be doing 68% more damage than his build. That is a big damage difference. As you can see in the total box, his build per weapon art will be doing around 10,000 damage with all of the buffs that he has. My build will be doing 17 and a half thousand damage. That is a 7,000 damage difference for using the same level cap and the same amount of buffs. How does he think that his build is mathematically correct? Now, using it against a boss, we have Elden Beast here using his damage negations and defenses, and I have already calculated the damage negation difference and factored that in. I am getting 75% more damage than his build. That is a lot. He's going from 8,000 damage to my 15,000 damage. In other words, you're looking at 3-shotting Elden Beast with all of your buffs active versus 2-shotting Elden Beast with all of your buffs active. Keep in mind, with my build, using Oath of Vengeance, you are completely protected from the weapon art. Which means that getting those two hits off is extremely easy. There is no reason artificially lower your damage just so you can use Ronnie's Dark Moon and Terra Magica. This by far is the worst build that I have ever covered on this channel. This is worse than his bleed build, where he said that Scavenger's Curse Sword was not the best bleed weapon, instead the Redubia is. That was that was wrong. However, there is a case for Reduvia in New Game where you can't get another Scavenger's Curve Sword. Because Reduvia is the best weapon in that case. The math supports that Scavenger's is the best. But he's over here saying, oh, Reduvia is the best. Why? If you need help calculating DPS, you may message me on Discord. I will give you the formula for calculating DPS and show you how to do it, walk you through it. Because if you're saying something is mathematically correct, and you can't properly factor DPS. How are you getting an objective measurement that it is mathematically correct? 